Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Fallacies, Lies, and Christian Apologetics, where we examine the fundamentally flawed reasoning of the defenders of the faith. And I would like to offer a special salute to Dicho, who has been making a valiant effort to try to catalog all of the constantly recycled defenses that are offered for the Christian faith that are repeatedly just parroted by Christians who think that they're offering some new revolutionary argument that we haven't heard before. It's kind of like a skeptical FAQ that he's trying to organize. And I would like to offer one more argument that I I think I've heard like several times over the past two months. Uh, I almost hear it every other week uh, by some new Christian who drops by my Jesus Never Existed video and makes this argument as if it's a brand new argument that I would never have heard before. The argument goes something like this. Not only does the resurrection of Jesus have eyewitness accounts and therefore should be accepted as something of history, but that these disciples and apostles were willing to die for their beliefs. They were persecuted, and yet they clung to their beliefs and went to their deaths happily to be reunited with their Lord and Savior. And that proves that it it must be true. This argument is so idiotic on so many different levels. Uh, First of all, I note the special pleading. They don't accept the fact that the Book of Mormon here has eyewitness accounts. There were signed eyewitness accounts by those who had witnessed the golden plates of the angel Moroni. But, but of course, oh, that's just silly. Those were just people who were making it up. But this, oh, this here is a true story and it's part of history. There's no reason to think that. It's special pleading. Six of one, half dozen of another. And if you're going to accept the eyewitness accounts of one religion, you have to accept eyewitness accounts of the other religion. And if you're going to be skeptical with one, you have to be skeptical with the other. But the argument here is that these eyewitness accounts were willing to be persecuted and go to their deaths for their beliefs. So that somehow offers more validity to their beliefs, right? Well, again, you can make the exact same argument for the Mormons who were persecuted for their beliefs and yet continue to hold to those beliefs. Do you necessarily think that the Mormons have the uh, true is the one true faith? Or, or do you just sort of discount them as a cult and all those people are crazy? And what about... Uh, all the modern day cults like the Branch Davidians, how they were all willing to go to their deaths for what they believed in. Or the Hale Bop cult, the Heaven's Gate cult as it was called, they were all willing to go to their deaths for what they believed in. Or the Jim Jones cult, they were all willing to die for what they believed in. I mean, if you're going to say that fanaticism proves truth, then again, if you're going to accept it for one, you have to accept it for all the others. Otherwise, this is just special pleading here. Additionally, What's kind of funny about this belief is it uses folklore to prove mythology. Yes, that certainly is the propaganda that the church created after it was established. That all these apostles and disciples were bravely going to their deaths. And this is, this is captured in Hollywood in movies like The Robe, where the main character and his wife are being sentenced to death by Tiberius, and they're holding their heads up high, looking forward to being united with their Savior up in heaven. Is there any reason to think that this really happened at all? Number one, that these apostles and disciples existed. Number two, that they were sentenced to death for what they believed in. And number three, that they bravely went to their deaths waiting to be reunited with their Lord and Savior. Is there any reason to think that the propaganda of the church in Hollywood have anything to do with what really happened in history? Speaking personally, I really find it so hard to believe that the Romans went out of their way to persecute the early Christians. And the reason I say this is because I'm looking at the track record of the Romans, and they were really tolerant towards all manner of religions within the empire. The only two times that I can think of, other than Christianity, where they persecuted a religion were the Druids in Britain and the Jewish people. And the reason that they persecuted the Jewish and the Druidic faiths is because they associated these religions with rebellion against Roman authority. But yet, I read the Bible here, and I read admonishments by Paul and by a variety of others, by Jesus, to obey the earthly kings upon this earth, because they are established, put in their positions by God. And Paul says in Romans chapter 13 that anyone who rebels against the secular authority is rebelling against God's against God. There are numerous admonishments in the Bible for slaves to obey their masters, for peasants to obey their kings. You would think the Romans would love a religion like this. And in fact, they actually did. Constantine embraced Christianity probably because he saw it as very useful for shoring up his authority. So I have a lot of doubts 
about the historiosity of these claims that the disciples and the apostles bravely went to their deaths for what they believed in. But even if it were true, why does fanaticism prove anything? Someone could please explain this to me. I would really appreciate it. May God's gift of reason light our way.